In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to align columnar data. We're using Visual Studio 2019. We're coding in C++. So we're going to click on Create a New Project. We're going to select Empty Project. Next. I'll just call this Columns. For our project name, we'll say Create. And while that's creating, then what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can print out columns of data and control their field width. Okay, we can see then we have this empty project environment. Over here in the Solution Explorer window, under Source Files, I'm going to right click, select Add New Item, and we're going to choose a C++ file. By default, it wants to name it source.cpp. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to call this main. I'm going to add that file. Remember the CPP extension stands for C++, and we have this empty uh, file now that we can start writing our C++ program. Right. And we're going to be printing out some numbers, so I'm going to say pound include IO stream. We're going to say using namespace standard because I the object and IO stream are defined in the standard namespace. And for this example, I find the screen to be less cluttered if I'm not typing the standard scope resolution operator. All right, remember every C++ program must have one main function. Execution starts from main. So we'll create that function and we'll just now say C out. Well, if we wanted to print out the numbers one, two, and three, the integers, the integer constants. If we just did this, all right, we're going to see then, I'm going to say start without debugging, we're going to see that this simply prints out the numbers on the screen without any spaces in between, right? One, two, and three, all right? Suppose we wanted things to line up in three different columns. We could start trying to type spaces in between here, Right, but that gets really tedious if we try to start controlling the amount of spaces in between by typing string literals that contain the spaces. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is we're going to use a function, setw set with function. Right, I've just popped up then a website, c++.com. Right, within that website here in the search bar, I type set w, which took us then to the documentation for this function. All right, when we look at this function, we see that first of all, it isn't defined in the IO manip library. We're going to have to include that library in our C++ program in order to use this function. All right, it's in the standard namespace. And what it does, its description, it says it sets the field width to be used on output operations. We're going to pass this an argument. So this is going to expect an integer argument, which is going to say how wide to make that particular column or field. And then you can see down here, this website always provides some example code of how this works. In this case, they were trying to print out the integer 77. Right? And you can see here that 77 was output then using 10 columns, it was right aligned. Let's just try this now in our own code. So let me minimize that. So we'll go back here and we'll include the IO manip library. And in their example, we can see that in one line, they just said C out, set width, we'll make ours 10. Well, if we just put this here and we're going to once again, build and run. Everything built, but when we call this function, what it does is it sets the field width to 10 for the first number that we put out. Because look now, we've got one, two, three, all the way shifted over here. We're going to assume that there's nine spaces here before the one, and it used one space then to write the one. We have to call this set width function before we output our other values as well. So let me close this. All right. And so what I would likely just do is call set width 10 here. And then let's 
add this in here. We could do it all in one line. Let's build and run. And now you can see the output. Each one of these is then written in a field that's 10 wide. We say it's right justified. The integer's all the way over on the right hand side of the field. Right? Now, instead of hard coding this, we could also use a variable. So let's define an integer variable. Let's call it, actually, let's call it n like, well, if we call it, let's call it n. And let's specify that n is equal to 10. And if we replace the hard coded 10 in here with the n, and now we'll build and run again. See, we get the same results. The nice thing about using the variable is if you're working with this data and later you decide, oh, well, I really wanted the column width to only be seven, you just have to change that value here and then rebuild and run. And we can see then that it used a column width of seven. Now what we could do as well is if we wanted things to be left justified, we can use left. So let's go back to the C++ website. Let's type left here. Okay, left is defined here in IO stream. And we can see the output is padded to the field width, appending field characters at the end, meaning it's going to be left justified. Our default is right justified. So we are going to type left for our justification in here. And let's see, up here it says, when the adjust field is set to left, the output is padded to the field width, width by inserting field characters at the end, effectively adjusting the field to the left. All right. In their example here, instead of using the set width function, they're actually using C out dot width, All right. setting the width, and then calling the left flag here. I believe this will also work with the set width function. Let's find out. All right. So here, let's just say left doesn't have to be on a line all by itself. Just putting that there to maybe make this a little more readable. Let's build and run and see what our results are. Now we can see, well, pops up to the right screen, everything was shifted over to the left. So once we set this to left, we don't have to set it every single time for the remaining ones. They will automatically be left justified. If we wanted to change the justification, say to right justification, then we could do that. Let's say we want one to be left justified, but we want two to be right justified. If we change this to right, we're going to find that both two and three will be right justified. When we run this, so let me stop the old one. I hadn't run that yet. I hadn't closed that. Any key? All right, let's run the new one, save and run. And so now we can see that one is left justified, but two and three are actually right justified, right? So once we've set that flag or set that justification, that holds. Right. And we could do this then if we wanted things to line up in multiple lines, right? Trying to close that. Right. Let's just go ahead and like I said, by default, everything is right justified, but let's just go ahead and set that there. And now, what if we wanted a second line to show that things line up? So on a second line, what if we were then to print out four, five, and six? 
All right, so let's build and run this. All right, and you can see then that everything is lining up as we have multiple lines of data here. Similarly, if you wanted to put some column descriptors above that, we could say C out. Maybe we would say something like call one, call two, call three for column three. And then let's set the justification for, sorry, the width for those columns as well. So set width, right in. I'm going to copy paste here. All right, and let's build and run. So save, build, and run. Control F5 is doing that all for me. And you can see here then, right, that by default, the strings were right justified as well. And we have these column titles lining up over our integer values. All right, so that gives you an idea then of how to use the set with function and left and right justification with strings and integers to uh, align things in col columnar fashion.